Boom, boom, boom. Okay. All right, the first thing we gotta do to get our boat ready is get this front seat out of here so I can get my batteries installed. Now it might be easier to do from inside the boat to start with, I believe. I don't have to take these all the way out. I just need to take them out far enough to get my gain access to my battery box. Now I'll be able to set my batteries over in here, put them in place and make the connections. Lord, those are heavy. What? Oh, it is pretty decent for a 1967, it's 53 year old boat. Okay. Now, when you got a lot of wires going to a battery like this, it's nice to, like I did last fall, is I zip tied them and I also label them. So I got right battery and obviously the red's positive and I've got left battery, which this is left battery, which would be negative. So this would be something that would go on here, something like this. But when you got a lot of stuff going like this and here I got left battery positive, which would be back here for this grouping. And then I've got right battery positive which is this grouping so that's how we got it all going together and that way it'll work every time and i only work on one at a time so i'll go ahead and cut this one off which was all left battery positive and that way i'll run these wires underneath the straps like this and over here same way i'll take these three and run them basically so they they're neat and organized and not this complete chaos and this doesn't look, it doesn't come out like a complete tangled mess we'll put a little nut on it temporarily to hold it and then we got right battery negative then i'll cut that one now where i've got the jumper uh cable here to to make this into a 24 volt set up I put a nut directly on top of that one just to make sure I maintain a solid connection there and then I follow up with the rest of the negative connections and I put a nut on top of that there our battery secured down with a strap we've got all our connections made we're good to go there now we can put our casting deck back down and move to the back of the boat and hook that battery up. All right, that battery's installed. All right. All right, folks, now we've got the batteries in. They're all installed. I've checked all the electricals. Everything works like it should. Only thing left to do now is fire it up. We're going to put water on the muffs. And uh, yeah, put water to the muffs and make sure we don't never start. Don't ever start your engine up without having muffs on it. Uh, you start it dry, you're gonna screw up your impeller, your water pump impeller for sure. And uh, let's see if the winterization I did probably close to 10 months ago did good. Now, obviously, it's been sitting winterized all summer because here we are in late August. And I still haven't gotten the boat in the water, this boat in the water. But this time we're going to go in the water. We're going to go in some big water. We're going to hit the Mississippi, like I said. So let's see how well it starts up. I haven't done anything other than make sure the electrical works. I haven't even turned the ignition key to see if the starter will even kick in. Cross your fingers. Let's turn the water on and see what it does. Oh.
Okay, one thing I've been battling and I alluded to, and maybe I didn't allude to it, I don't know what I did so far in this video, but I put electronic ignition on this boat over three years ago. It's been the Pectronics electronic ignition with a flamethrower coil. And as you can see, it works great. Now there's a dead spot from idle to throttling forward, but it'll come out of it. If you kind of jockey the throttle a little bit, it'll come out of it, then it goes to full throttle and runs like a champ. Now one of the things I understand happens here and i'm going to test it on this guy is this has a resistance wire going to the coil on the positive side and what that does is i believe it reduces the voltage down to i believe they said nine volts uh, some of them can go as low as six volts because the coil that comes on these are externally resisted well the new coils are internally resisted so this one has uh, as a three ohm coil and i have a feeling when you have the resisted wire to reduce the amount of juice going to your points so you don't burn your points up. Well, once you go to electronic ignition, you've eliminated the points. You don't have to worry about burning points up anymore, which that's a beautiful thing, right? So what you got to do when you put this setup on, which I did not do, and like I said, I've been running it this way for at least three years now, is I did not do the bypass where you cut the resistance wire and you add a 12-volt wire, a straight 12-volt wire that's ignition, ignition controlled uh, to the positive side which will give you maximum performance out of your out of your coil out of your uh electronic ignition and gets the best juice to your plugs so that's what we're going to do next before we go to the river today is i'm going to find the wires now all the wiring diagrams i have and all the books that i have show that the resistant wire is purple and white striped the light, the two boats that i'm working on that have this same setup that i'm putting electronic ignition on has a light tan and a dark tan no purple so what the hell's going on there so i'm gonna have to decide where this light tan wire goes and figure out which wire do i flip and cut and uh we'll go from there i guess but yeah that's kind of a bummer but anyway we're gonna get the voltmeter out i'm gonna fire this thing back up i'm gonna see how many volts we have at the coil here and then I'll see how many volts we have at the coil when it's running. And if it has 12 volts at the coil when it's running, then it's okay. Then it's not the, it, this thing doesn't have the resistance wire. But if it does, then I got to get 12 volts to it. All right, let's jump in and see what this thing has. I'll just turn it on, but don't start. There we go. I didn't have a good ground before. 7.49 and then fire it up again jumps to 10 yeah so we're running anywhere about 10 10 volts so we don't have a full 12 and i got 14.3 coming out of the alternator so that's good all right go ahead and shut her down So now that we know it's for, it's still being resisted, we're gonna go ahead and make the fix. Now the cool part is on this particular boat, I have put an electric fuel pump on there that has uh, 12 volts coming to it from the ignition. I can possibly tap onto that and go from there. Now I got nothing. Get it hit start, it won't start I bet. Oh yeah, put the water on. Not sure it was the wrong one. Oh, it's just there's no loop to go through. Right. So now brown wire. Now I just need to run a hot wire to that thing and it'll be 12, 12 volt and I'll be golden. Yeah. Alrighty. So I saw that this brown wire here came off of the uh, starter solenoid on this off the starter. So the darker tan, darker brown of the two. So I thought, well, that's got to be my hot wire for the start which is what it so i snipped the light tan wire there again all the books and stuff show the resistance wire being the purple so anyway i cut that wire once i cut it the engine would fire as long as you're trying to start as soon as you turn the ignition key to off it would die so i'm like okay cool i got the right wire because this is the start wire and then you got your run wire which is what we just hooked up here so i picked up on a, a 12 volt source that's uh, ignition controlled put it on the coil here 
boom it fires up runs like a champ like it should now and i and then i check my voltage here now my voltage here is right at 12 volts while it's running which is exactly what i need not nine not ten but twelve so now the coil can do everything it's supposed to do deliver the right amount of spark to my spark plugs and we're good so we're one step closer to heading to the river all right now that we have the uh, inboard motor running light let's just make sure this kicker's still going to do what it needs to do we primed it let's see if she'll pop sitting for a year. One last piece of propulsion to check. Deploy. There we go. Holy tower of power. There we go. Looks like the trolling motor all works like it should. All right, check this out. We got a big barge here. And you see on the left-hand side here, how it's down in the water quite a ways where it says like a 10 feet. But then you go to the right over here and you see how much of it's out of the water. Even the bottom is just out of the water a little bit. They're currently filling this thing up. You can see the dust coming out of it as it's filling up. So it's pretty darn cool, but that's how much the barge is in the water. So a lot of times all you see is that metal rail with the tie-ups. And that's all you see but you got to realize how much is really down in the water that's pretty cool here's another one down here that's actually empty and i'm guessing it's next in line to fill up but that's pretty darn cool all right folks we're out here on the mississippi river we got the water wet now or the boat wet in the water got the water wet do you know you can get water wet uh we're drifting backwards right now at a rate of about 1.1 miles an hour we're just idling we're moving along at the speed of the river right here to give you an idea how fast the Mississippi's flowing through this area. There's 1.1 to one mile an hour is all. But uh, we're gonna run, we went to run up river a ways, went up about a quarter to half mile and realized we can't go any further that way. So we're gonna see how far we can go down river and see if there's any amenities or anything that we can stop and get something to drink or just enjoy the day on the water. Plus facing this direction, I'm sitting in the shade from the Bimini top, which is actually quite nice. So let's take a little quick river tour. Uh, we're gonna, I'll run it almost wide open throttle. I'll run it about 30 miles an hour, 29 miles an hour. It's a nice cruising speed. It's not too hard on the motor. Oh, there's a guy up there on the catwalk. But yeah, so let's go check some things out. It's gonna be fun. stabilization. miss anything hey, gate's open. hey the gate's opening I don't want to say I'm down, just, just in case you do get that. 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure I didn't get that. So we went through a lock and dam. We're at lock and dam number 17. We've come about 20 miles downriver, which is pretty brave on an old 1976 StarCraft, but you know, I kind of trust my work. And uh, going down to lock and dam 18 is another 26.6 miles. As you can see here, the water dropped five foot to let us go through. And we could have ramped it. We could have ramped it. Five foot, we could have jumped that. Oh, it would have been a hard landing. But yeah, the gate's opening up now, letting us through. Like I said, the harbor master here, if that's what you call them at these lock and dams, they are real friendly people. They're uh, just gave them a call, told them, hey, I'm new to this. They said, just gave me some simple instructions and said, stay back until the gates are open. You hear a horn, we pulled in and bam, lamb, here we are. This is pretty freaking cool. This is pretty cool. So yeah, you can see the wet water on the wall there. How That's how far it dropped down. The wet wall water, the wet water wall. The wet, what? what? Whoa, whoa, Pickle Rick. I'm turning the steering wheel and it's doing nothing because I'm in not in gear. That's cool. Thank you so much. Thank you, will do. That's so cool. I got the gate opening and everything. Nice. How much battery you got? 54. Huh? 54. All right, so I can get out here to the metal, can I? I think I had my mic off the first go round, so we'll see how this goes this time. We got a barge heading our way. I'll show you that real quick. Rip. Rip. And there's currently a barge in Lock and Dam 18. We're gonna go through the barge, or go through the barge. We can't run through the barge. We're gonna go through Lock and Dam 18, hopefully, and see if we can get about eight miles south of the dam. People told us there's a place where we can get fuel. We've gone about 50 miles down river so far with the almighty StarCraft and it is uh, questionable whether we have enough fuel to get back. Um, we brought an extra five, five and a half gallons of fuel with us in a uh, gas cans. And that's gonna, that would, from this point on, we could get back about eight miles easily enough, dump that gas in, go to the gas station, about a half mile walk to get to the gas station fill those gas tanks up, come back, top off our tank, and then we could get back home, no problem. Or we go through Lock and Dam 18, about eight miles down the river, we can fuel up there, not even touch our reserve gas, and make it all the way back, plus have five and a half gallons of reserve gas. Not to mention we got our two-stroke smoke gas for our little kicker motor. We got about three gallons of that if I need to use that. So anyway, right now we're sitting with the old Altera, Minn Kota Altera. Ooh, here comes the barge and it's holding us anchored just outside of the way of this barge that's getting ready to come through. And we'll flip you to some drone footage, you can see that. You can see right here, it's just starting to, just starting to peak. And this, this barge filled the lock up completely. There looked like it was wall to wall barge, which is pretty cool. So yeah, the bad part is hopefully we don't run into any more barges and we can get through faster next go around. Anyway, stay tuned. We'll tune you back in when we get ready to go through the lock. Well, it was at this point in the video, folks. We, uh, I kind of lost some battery, lost some uh, videoing capabilities. Let's say that. And we sat there at Lock and Dam 18 for about 15 minutes or so. And then we called the lock master back and said, hey, we're not going to wait for that barge to go through so we can go eight more miles, just turn around and come right back. So we decided uh, next time we'll start just past Lock 18 and we'll head on downriver for another adventure. 
Uh, we ended up heading back up river. We stopped at this little town and it was only about eight miles back up river. <laughs> we went there. We were, we were out of fuel. We were running low on fuel. Uh, I brought four and a half gallons with me. I had my tanks, an 18 gallon tank in that uh, Starcraft. So we went back up river eight miles once we left the lock. And there was a little town we went by. I have the name right across here where we stopped. There was a little cove area that we could pull into. We anchored the boat there and we took our two gas cans and topped off our tank. We didn't top it off. We just put those, it's basically four and a half gallons in there. I started off this trip with a full 18 gallon tank. We went and uh, dumped these nine, this nine, uh, four and a half gallons in. Then we hopped and walked about a half mile into town to a gas station carrying our gas cans. And right when we got to the gas station, this sweet, sweet lady uh, helped us out. She says, hey, you guys need a ride? And she was so awesome. I said, yes, that would be a blessing. And we ended up putting, uh, filling up our two, our four and a half gallons worth of cans. And she gave us a ride back down to the river, about a half mile. Because keep in mind, it's like 100 degrees out. It's heated, it was like 95 with a heat index of 100. It was, and it was humid. It was absolutely hot out. So not having to carry those full gas cans was nice. Plus we, you know, bought some Gatorades and when we got back to the boat, we downed those Gatorades because we were sweating and dehydrating pretty bad by this time. Anyway, we dumped that nine gallons into the tank, right? And that still didn't fill it up or that four and a half gallons. So we put nine gallons in. So to go 50 miles uh, down river, actually we covered about 58 miles at this point. Um, and that nine gallons of fuel did not top off my tank. So, and I didn't know exactly where we were at on fuel wise. My gas gauge is acting really hinky, but uh, I'm gonna have to get that fixed before we go out again, probably. But anyway, we put the fuel in, then I felt comfortable we had enough fuel to get back home. Uh, we get all the way back up to lock 17, which I think my son's got some more drone footage here. We'll throw up a top, throw up here while I'm talking and called the lock master and he says you got about a two hour wait because they had a barge that they had to break apart bring through part of it then hook the other part to it and then all that fun stuff and then it can move on through and then it let us through so at, low, at that moment in time i was wishing i had my fishing poles because we could have went done a little fishing we ended up parking on the uh iowa side of the river and just sitting there with the uh trolling motor had us anchored in the shade and with a little bit of breeze occasionally kept it tolerable waiting for that uh barge to come on through so we it only took about an hour and a half we were sitting there and the barge went on through we were able to get in get on the other side of the lock and head back to muscatine we dropped in at muscatine and uh we clocked a total of 95 miles uh i had it on my on gps on my phone clocked us at a total uh 95 miles that we rode around that afternoon. Keep in mind, we put in the water at uh, 12, 15, I believe it was, and we got out of the water just about seven o'clock, 7 p.m. Now we did have a lot of wait time for the locks to go through that and uh, play around there, but uh, it was a good time. I, I definitely would do it again in a heartbeat. Uh, it was a great experience. I've never been through a lock before. I know a lot of people have, I have not. And as you can see, my, my boat's pretty tiny inside that big old lock and they, those folks are spectacular that do the, that operate the locks there uh, as far as they are willing to open them up and let just my little tiny boat in and to go up or down river. It was, it was a good time, but we ended up going 95 miles and I topped off the tank this morning and it took 11 gallons of fuel to top it off. So 11 plus my nine gallons of fuel, this thing burned 20 gallons of fuel in that amount of t in that amount of mileage which i think is up 4.75 miles per gallon which isn't spectacular but boats aren't known for their great mileage these are not priuses and uh but uh yeah now I, the boat performed absolutely flawlessly done everything it's supposed to do uh which is you know taking it out of hibernation after 10 months throwing in some batteries and checking the oil level making sure it's all good topping off the gas before we left and heading down the river and to go 95 miles on our boat, you just dewinterized, uh, says a lot about how you winterize your boat, uh, and take care of it. Uh, maintenance is everything and reliability is everything. Uh, there again, 
if I'm going to have a breakdown, it's going to be a surprise. It's going to, not going to be because it's like, eh, yeah, I probably should have done that. That's why we're stranded now. That won't happen to me. That's not my plan. That's not how I roll. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoy some more drone footage here at the end. I'll give you some more uh, shots from the drone and uh, we'll add some music to it. But uh, it was a really beautiful day out on the river. Uh, we saw... Uh, some fish top the water in a few spots. It's pretty cool to watch. And uh, it's, it's just neat, a, a neat overall experience. I think my son and I are now hooked on the Mississippi River. <laughs> Sounds kind of crazy, but uh, uh, we're going out next weekend. If the weather permits, we're gonna put in above lock 16, and we're gonna go up to lock 15 and possibly up to lock 14. Uh, we'll see how many miles that uh, covers. And uh, we're, gonna have a, we're gonna have a good time again. And we'll get you another another uh, bit of footage on that and that experience, that part of the river, and so on. But I need to get back busy working on some boats and some outboards. So you guys enjoy this video. I'll see you next weekend, I'm hoping, with some new videos. This is Michael saying, if it ain't broke, fix it till it is. And I'm out. I'm going to go out in the river. That's what I'm going to do. You got that boom, boom, boom.